right now we're going to be utilizing some algebra techniques along with our fundamental identities to um, you know, to verify some new trig identities. So you'll be given some trig identities and you'll be asked to verify them using these other things that we've learned. Um, or it could be the case that you're asked to come up with your own identities. Maybe you're given an expression to simplify um, or to do some algebra with and come up with your own identities, try to find another expression that's equivalent to the one given. Okay, so those are the kinds of things we'll be seeing as we move forward. Um, to do that, uh, we need to first establish a few algebra ideas, make sure that you're clear on those uh, and review some things, particularly the idea of factoring. Um, factoring is an important skill in algebra. It's also gonna be an important skill when working with identities. Uh, but the factoring we're going to do is going to look a little bit different than it did uh, when we worked, when you may have seen it in an algebra course. Um, some basic factoring ideas. Uh, first of all, when, uh, when you're factoring polynomials in algebra, you had something like a uh, uh, difference of squares, x squared minus 9, for instance, um, is factorable to the quadratic polynomial that factors into two linear polynomials. And a difference of squares will always factor into two conjugates. We call them conjugates. Um, they are conjugates meaning that they have the same two terms, x plus 3 and x minus 3. The same two terms except the sign in the middle is different, right? So x and 3 are shared in the two factors, but the one has a plus, one has a minus between them. Um, so this is the factored form. Now, an equivalent... Um, a trig version of, of this could be something like the sine squared theta minus 1, right? Sine squared minus 1. Now, this is also um, a difference of two squares. It's the sine of theta squared and 1 squared. And so it is factorable in a similar way into two conjugates. The conjugates, of course, would be the sine of theta plus 1, and the sine of theta minus one. Okay, so instead of using x as your variable, you're kind of thinking about the sine of theta as your variable or as your, um, you know, your, the function that's being squared there, okay? Um, and so if you wanted to ever check any of these, you know, check your factoring, you just multiply together. You do x times x is x squared, x times negative three is negative three x, uh, 3 times x is 3x, so those two, the negative 3x and the 3x will add up to 0 and cancel out, and then the 3 times negative 3 gives you the negative 9. So it should, when you redistribute or remultiply, give you the original. Here, sine times sine is sine squared, sine times negative 1 is negative sine, 1 times sine is sine, those two would add up to 0, and then 1 times negative 1 is the negative 1 there. So, um, so you can always remultiply to make sure that they are equal to the original. Okay. Um, in a similar way, you can factor just about any um, trig expression that mimics a factorable algebraic polynomial. So something like uh, x squared minus, um, I don't know, 4x minus 21, for instance. In a polynomial like this, uh, the lead coefficient is 1, it's a trinomial. And we find factors of negative 21 that add up to negative 4. Uh, for instance, negative 7 and positive 3 would work. And so the factors are x uh, minus 7 and x plus 3. And again, you could re-multiply those together to get the original polynomial. If, uh, or I'm sorry, a similar trigonometric example would be something like I don't know, the tangent squared of theta minus 4 times the tangent of theta minus 21. This is also factorable in a similar way. The tangent, right, the tangent kind of represents the x in the original, you know, in the previous polynomial. And so instead of factoring it into x minus 7 and x plus 3, it'd be tangent of theta minus 7 and tangent of theta plus 3. Right, so the tangent, the trig function, becomes kind of your variable term uh, in the factoring. So this becomes 
tangent of theta minus 7 and tangent of theta uh, plus 3. Okay, So factoring can be done with trig expressions in the same way that you would with polynomials, just replacing the variable with that trig expression, or with a, a trig function, I suppose. Okay, And we can do you know, um, more difficult ones, the AC method, we could do um, grouping method if you're familiar with some of those um, algebra techniques for factoring. Um, I won't go through all the details of that uh, because in this course we expect that you've done quite a bit of factoring in the past um, and are you know, pretty good with that. So um, I just want you to see in some basic examples how algebraic uh, polynomial factoring and trig factoring um, kind of relate to each other. Okay? Um, it will be an important skill uh, moving forward. Um, and then of course we have our fundamental identities that we've talked about now in the past. Um, your Pythagorean identities, for instance, um, which is you know, your sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one, and then all the other variations with the tangent and secant and the cotangent and cosecant. Um, you have your reciprocal identities, your uh, quotient identities, odd even identities. So there's lots of fundamental identities that we can also bring in as we go through um, verifying new trig identities um, moving forward. So in the next few videos, I'll just go through some examples that will show you, hopefully give you some idea of what, uh, what I'm looking for and, and what my math lab will be looking for um, you know, as you go through the homework and as you take tests, uh, things like that. Um, and hopefully that will, that will, uh, the examples will be good, uh, give you some good variety in, in terms of, uh, you know, what different types of problems you'll see.